This is Tom Mullen at the Libertarian National Convention in Orlando. I'm here with Daryl Perry, presidential candidate. Daryl, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, uh, this this year, the Libertarian Party is getting a lot of attention because of the unpopularity of the Republican and Democratic nominees. Certainly. Uh, what do you think uh, you can do as far as... Um, convincing people the Libertarian Party is a better alternative for them. Well, what I can do is I can, as I have been doing for the last couple of years during the run, is proclaim the ideas of liberty, the the actual ideas of liberty, not watered-down versions, where we've got several of the candidates and several of the candidates over the last decade, decade and a half, have watered down the message of liberty. And they've tried to basically... Uh, appease people and pander to people that otherwise would not be receptive to the ideas, to, to try to coerce them and say, well, we're mildly better than this other party, and I want to let people know that our ideas actually are a lot better, that taxation is stuff. And I, I know that, you know, that meme is very popular on the internet right now, but I can actually explain why taxation is stuff. I can't come over to your house and take your stuff. If me and everybody in this hotel decide we're going to Tom's house to take his stuff, it's still theft. If we call ourselves the government and come to Tom's house and take Tom's stuff, it's just as much theft as if we did it as a gang of thieves. And it's something that people need to hear and that need to think about. And libertarians don't need to be trying to think of new ways to steal money from people. And when I first joined the Libertarian Party in 1999, the party proudly proclaimed the party of principle. And over the last decade, decade and a half, the party has moved to this fiscally responsible or fiscally conservative, socially tolerant, socially liberal thing. And when you define libertarian that way, it makes us sound like centrist. It makes us sound like we're John Kasich or Michael Bloomberg. And no one in their right mind would ever call either John Kasich or Michael Bloomberg libertarian. But they are definitely liberal Republicans. And so when you try to redefine libertarian to mean something other than those that are based on the principles of liberty, then you do have this weird message that basically tries to reach out to somebody, but not in a way to actually get them to understand where you're coming from. It goes after the Republicans that might be disgruntled with whoever the Republican nominee is, but who still largely fears the Democrats more than they stand for not this guy. And if you, you know, pander too much the other way, then you go after the disgruntled Democrats that might fear the Republicans more than they dislike whoever their nominee is. But if you get them to understand your ideas as being completely distinct from the ideas of any other candidate, that's when you start winning over voters. That's where you start winning over the hearts and the minds of people, and they do come over to your ideas and realize that your ideas are superior. So, and, and I, I recall that uh, Scott Lazarowitz over at Lou Rockwell wrote you a nice review about being the purest libertarian. Yes. But you're up against some high-profile candidates here with a two-term governor and uh, you know, world-famous entrepreneur John McAfee. Uh, what do you have to do to get on the debate stage and, um, and, and eventually win the nomination? To get on the debate stage, I need 10% of the nomination tokens. And it's not actually a physical token, it's a piece of paper that they call a nomination token. But I need 10% of those based on the delegate count at the beginning of business tomorrow, which is going to be somewhere between 90 to 105, based on how many delegates actually show up. And once I get that number of tokens, I'm included in the C-SPAN debate. If you include me in the C-SPAN debate, and I don't know if you were at the debate that happened last night, hosted by the Libertarian State Leadership Alliance. No, no. They did a straw poll after that debate. I came in third with 23% of the vote. Gary Johnson came in first with 35, which means he's vulnerable. If the results after round one of voting on Sunday morning are anything like that, I have a very realistic chance of walking off of that floor as the Libertarian Party presidential nominee. And let's say that you do get the nomination for the Libertarian Party. Um, some people might argue, well, uh, 
although you may be a pure libertarian, uh, McAfee or Johnson have a lot more fundraising ca capability, a lot more name recognition. I'm a lot more efficient. How do you go up against Clinton and Trump? We're going to spend a billion dollars each. I'm a lot more efficient. I honestly could not tell you how much I've raised because I'm not filing with the FEC. And I had somebody ask me last night. They said, uh, that's a big concern to a lot of people in the party. And I said, if the LNC, the Libertarian National Committee, if they asked me, because they feared you know, losing ballot access, even though ballot access and FEC filing have nothing to do with one another, but if I were asked by the men and women on the Libertarian National Committee to file with the FEC, I would begrudgingly do it because I agree with private contracts. So I, I would do it to appease the party. I don't care about the legal ramifications. I'll sit in jail for violating finance laws. I don't care. I think they're all unconstitutional. But as far as, you know, how, how could I compete against somebody raising a billion dollars? Again, I'm very efficient. I own a modified RV. I could drive that myself around the entire country. I don't need to jump on an airplane. I don't need to hire limousines. If I can't drive there myself, I'll hire an Uber. <laughs> Great. And uh, I'll hitchhike if I have to, but I don't think I'll have to. I, I've Several times I, I've posted statuses or sent out emails to people on my email list saying, it would be really nice if I could raise this much money to get to this event. And I've had that much money come in to cover me going to that specific event. So every time I've needed some money to come in, I've gotten the money to come in. One thing that I would love to see, don't send the money directly to me. Create some sort of committee. Create a political committee. And do grass actual grassroots advertising. Run commercials. Make commercials yourself. And run those on local television. Because that is where people start saying, wait a second, this is a commercial paid for by some local group that just likes this guy? Like, this isn't top down? Because the way Libertarian Party, and actually all minor party presidential campaigns work, is it's not this top down coattail effect. It's actually the opposite. Very strong local candidates bring in votes to the top ticket campaign with Libertarians, with Green Party, with Constitution Party. Whereas with Republicans and Democrats, you have a strong presidential candidate, and they can help the people down ticket. With Libertarians, it's the opposite, to where the down ticket helps the up. So I would actually go out and campaign with people running for state reps. I would go out and campaign with people running for U.S. Congress, people running for county office, people running for U.S. Senate, people running for governor. I'll actually go on the streets and help people petition. And I don't think any other presidential candidate running this year or in the past has ever said that they will help petition, but I will. Because that's part of what it takes to get the party on the ballot in all 50 states. It takes people, you know, to take a military phrase, it takes boots on the ground. And I'm willing to put my boots on the ground, my metaphorical boots, <laughs> that is, on the ground and work with the other candidates to actually help spread the ideas of liberty. Because I honestly believe that within the next decade, we can have libertarians in state legislative offices elected as libertarians. Not people elected as Republicans and Democrats that, while they're in office, become libertarians. Right. I think in the next decade, we can actually have libertarians elected as libertarians in some state houses. So, if you do climb this mountain and you win the nomination, what does a Daryl Perry administration look like? And specifically, a... Um, you know, the presidency's powers are limited. A libertarian president's probably more likely to respect the limits. What are two or three things you would do as president if you got in there? I'll tell you the first three things I'll do. Give a full pardon to Private Chelsea Manning. And as soon as I have a chance, I'll apologize for everything that happened. Second thing, full pardon to Ross Ulbricht. And as soon as I get a chance, apologize for everything that happened. Third thing I'll do, drop all charges against Edward Snowden, offer him free and clear passage to return to the United States. A free man. Fourth thing, blanket pardon for every nonviolent federal offender that has a victimless offense. So all nonviolent uh, drug offenders, pardon. Anybody that's in for any other victimless offense, as long as it was nonviolent, full pardon. And then we can start working on 
reducing the budget, bringing the troops home, closing down Guantanamo. But there's four major things that I can do on day number one as soon as the oath of office is administered. So how do you think you're doing right now as far as getting those um, those tokens? Do you, do you have a count, and how far do you have to go? Well, I have kind of a count, but I know it's not an accurate count because they're telling people, turn your tokens into the ballot box, don't give it to the campaign. Mm. But there are some people giving me their tokens so that I can have some kind of accurate count, and I know that I have enough tokens to actually be entered into nomination, which is 30 tokens. And I speculate that I'll need between 90 to 105 to be included in the debate. And again, I, I don't know how many people have actually turned their tokens in to the ballot box with my name on it, but I know some have. So I, I think right now I'm about halfway there, but we've still got uh, the rest of today and tomorrow morning. So we've got you know, half a day basically to collect tokens. I'm having a party tonight where one of the admission requirements is you give me your token. <laughs> so I expect to collect a couple dozen there as well, and I'm fairly certain that I will be in the debate tomorrow night. All right. Well, best of luck to you. Thank and you very much, Sage, and thank you for your time. Thank you.